Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, first episode of the Azure Databricks series. In this series we will cover many aspects of Azure Databricks. I'm going to start uh, in the first episode with the provisioning. Whenever we are provisioning an Azure Databricks, what's the relation between this resource, this Azure resource and resource groups? So uh, Azure Databricks, as you can see, as you will see in, in a moment in the demo, um, it's a resource just like any other resource in Azure. It has a resource provider. Um, and this resource can, to create it, you have to create it inside a, a resource group. Uh, so the relation between this resource and the resource group, just like any other resource, you have to create it inside the resource group and you can use this resource group for uh, the deployment. You can use it for giving uh, permissions are back. You can get, use it for um, tagging and and cost management and all the stuff that's as usual that's business as usual regarding Azure however when you are creating an Azure Databricks workspace this is the one and it, it's inside a resource group uh, it creates for itself another resource group this one and in this second resource group this is a managed resource group managed by the Databricks workspace now we will start by like the first time we hear about this expression, the Databricks workspace. When you are creating the Azure Databricks uh, resource, this is actually a workspace. So the resource type in this case is a, work, a workspace. The workspace is the place where you are uh, authoring your notebooks, collaborating, and you can create your clusters as well. Because you are creating the clusters, then you have to have a resource group managed by Databricks workspace and this resource group will be used for the cl cluster resources. Um, this resource group has to be created by the Databricks creation process itself. By default, as you will see in the demo, it will create it using the Databricks workspace. Uh, however, you can control the name of the resource if you would like. So the name can be controlled, but you cannot provision it before creating the um, the, works, the workspace itself. By default, the resource will have a storage account and it may or may not have a VNet and NSG. If you choose not to have VNet integration with your own VNet, which we will discuss in the coming video, then it will create a VNet for itself and an, a network security group. If you choose to integrate it with your own VNet, in this case, there is no uh, VNet or NSG create, then you will only have a storage account. This this storage account, by the way, is used for the DBFS uh, or the file system for Databricks. So that's all created here. That's why in, in Databricks, you can have a notebook, you can create the notebook um, without creating a cluster yet. Because and, and even when you have a cluster and the cluster is uh, deallocated and then recreated back again, you are not losing any data because all the data is stored inside this storage account. This uh, resource group, as I told you, is managed by the Databricks and to control this management, Databricks is locking this resource group. So this resource group is locked. So you cannot do any, like it's a read only lock. That means you can only read the properties of this resource group, but you cannot update this resource group by any means. Then the question might be, how about I want to do tagging? How can I tag this resource group? Because I need to make sure that um, I'm doing internal billing or I need to check my um, my cost or something or something like this. In this case, you will add the tagging to the Databricks workspace. So whatever tag you add here, Databricks will replicate this tag in the resource group itself. You add a tag and at the same time will be added in the resource group. That's it for the whiteboard and let's move to a demo. So on this demo, we'll see the portal experience in creating the uh, Databricks workspace and then we'll see how can we override some of this uh, this experience using ARM templates. So I'm inside the portal right now, I'm in a resource group called Playground, just like creating any other resource in Azure, I'm gonna create an Azure Databricks resource. The intro, I'm gonna choose a name from 
portal using an existing resource group that is playground and then choosing the tier uh, for now we will not choose the vnet integration that will be in another uh, video another topic uh, we can check the um, the arm template using the automation options if i click on this one as you can see in the arm template this is the resource that we have it's only one resource azure databricks workspace and there is uh, in the properties for this resource it is here the managed resource group id which is coming from a variable when you go to this variable here you will see it's the variable that gets the managed resource group id from this name so this is this is the beginning which is choosing the name for this managed resource group and it takes the default the in here is using databricks dash rg dash and then the workspace name and then just a unique uh, random string in this case uh, if you are okay with this then you you would use it this way but however the next demo will see how can we change this arm template to choose our own so i'm going to return back to here i'm going to create it and then let's investigate uh, and explore together uh, the resources that will be created if i go to my resource group back again so here the the deployment succeeded i paused for a minute just to make sure that everything is created and you will see here this is our resource it's inside the playground resource group as we uh, chose for that deployment this is the azure uh, view that we see the workspace Later, we'll see launching the workspace and the experience inside the Databricks itself. But for now, we'll see just the properties that you yeah, you'll see here. The most important one that I want to discuss is the managed resource group. This is the resource group that is managed by the uh, workspace. If you go here to our resource groups, you will see this is the resource group that we are uh, like we created as part of this deployment databricks under uh, dash rg dash the name which is happened to be from the portal and then uh, a random uh, string if you open this resource group uh, the most important one that the, the feature that i want to show you here is the locks you have a lock a read only lock that allows you to read this resource group and the resources inside it but you cannot change anything actually you cannot even connect to this uh, storage account from storage explorer or something like this um, the, as you can see there is a storage account the uh, network security group and a vnet these two are created just because we did not chose to have we did not choose to have a vnet integration if we are choosing to have a vnet integration then in this case uh, these will not be created will not be created and you will be uh, joining or li linking the resources to your vnet okay so um, the issues that we raised in, in the whiteboard is what about uh, something like I want to have tags how can we add tags here if you try to add tags here will not work because this resource group is locked but if you want to add tags then you go to the uh, Databricks itself, Databricks workspace itself, and then you can tag it here. So let me add um, tag name is project. My project this is the value cost center, and this is the number. Let's save it. And right away, when you go to the resource group you will see in my resource group the managed resource group we have the same tags applied okay now the second the second uh, issue that we are having is how can we create our own resource group in this case you can take the databricks um, template and then with a slight update here what i did is i am using a parameter called managed resource group and you pass this parameter uh, either using uh, uh, you pass it during the deployment or in a, t in a parameter file so here in my parameter file um, I'm calling it playground uh, databricks okay so if we created this I'm executing my template 
you'll see here. Here our workspace is created. When you go to the properties, you will see this is the managed resource group with the name that we chose. And inside the resource group, I, I see here that the deployment is not fully completed yet. So the energy is created, the VNet is, uh, is created. And if we refresh, you should see by now we have the storage account, okay? Uh, that's it for, for now for the resource group relation with the Databricks. In the coming video, we'll discuss the VNet integration with Databricks. Thank you.